I'd look at clouds from both sides now, from up and down, and still somehow it's cloud illusions I recall. I really don't know. The relationship between the Yorkville folk scene of the 60s and 70s and Baroque music, uh, for our purposes, boils down to coffee. Uh, coffee was uh, the drink of choice in many of the Yorkville cafes uh, that hosted many of the musicians that um, that played in that scene. And in the Leipzig Zimmermann Coffee House, they also drank coffee while they were listening to uh, to some Baroque music. So that's the relationship that we went on for this uh, for this project. Um, other than that, there's a lot. There are a lot of relationships between different kinds of music. There are string instruments. Uh, there is singing. Uh, there are a lot of stylistic similarities that uh, you know might get a little too schooly to get into. But uh, but there are a lot of uh, a lot of these these similarities. And Baroque music, a lot of Baroque music comes from folk dances and uh, folk forms, so it's not uh, it's it's not a, a stretch to uh, to relate folk music and uh, and Baroque music. The songs that Marco and I decided on uh, were, there were a few things that we looked at when we were trying to decide on the repertoire. One is if it fit into the um, the kind of Yorkville scene, if the artist that we were representing was a, a part of the scene, and uh, I think we succeeded in finding these. There were a lot of musicians we had to choose from, uh, but we decided on, on, on the ones that we did. Uh, the other thing we looked at is the uh, kind of the, the way that the song could be could be translated into something that could be played by this particular instrumentation in this group of musicians. So the song had to have some stuff in it that I could deal with as an arranger. And by stuff, I just mean some interesting harmonic moves, some things that I can kind of uh, kind of work into uh, an arrangement that will be interesting for, you know, for example, an oboe and a bassoon to play to play parts to have parts for them to play. And not all songs are uh, are easy to do that with. Uh, so the ones that we decided on had some had some of that stuff, some of that kind of just inspiring nuts and bolts musical stuff that allowed me to kind of go to town on them and uh, and arrange them for the for the musicians involved. The approach to arranging these folk songs for a period ensemble starts with the song. It starts with uh, with a way to make the song be what it's about without letting the uh, kind of arrangement get in the way. Uh, and uh, lucky for me, I had a singer to work with, like a singer like Alex Samaras to work with, who could sing the phone book and you'd you would weep uncontrollably because uh, that's you know that's that's what he does. Um, but to approach arranging the songs, what I wanted to do is find find little moments in the songs that I could that I could kind of exploit melodically for the instruments to play, and then further to that, I had to and maybe this is one of the challenges I had to try my best to write things that feel at least a little bit idiomatic for the instrument and for the for the period. I don't know Baroque music like like these musicians do. Um, However, I can look at uh, a lot of kind of source material. I can look at a lot of recordings of early music and find some things that that kind of make the music feel like like uh, like early music. And I looked for some of those things, uh, and I tried to sort of meld it with the way that the the song works in the first place. And uh, that was, uh, I think, one of the kind of opportunities and one of the joys, but also one of the challenges is to kind of architect the arrangements so that they feel like they fit not only the song but the style and the musicians. So the two new pieces of music uh, that are, will be featured on this film that weren't uh, a part of the original set list for, uh, for Cafe Counterculture that we did at the Burdock a little while ago, in the before COVID times, uh, are American Tune by Paul Simon and uh, Old Man by Neil Young. Uh, we chose Old Man partly because in the original concert we wanted to have a Neil Young tune 
and we just the time constraints didn't allow it we there was so much music for us to choose from and we the pieces we decided on for the original program just were the they were just the ones we decided on so uh the addition of this neil young tune was uh was seemed quite, kind of a uh an obvious one as for american tune this this is one that marco brought and it's possibly and probably i would also i would even say almost definitely not a song that paul simon would have played in the Yorkville coffee scene. He and Simon and Garfunkel were sort of a part of the a part of the um the the culture there or a visiting part of the culture, I guess. But this is a song that Paul Simon uh recorded later on in his career. And the thing that drew us to it, it's still related through Paul Simon, but uh it's based on the melody is based on uh, a Bach chorale. So we decided to use that chorale as the introduction and outroduction. Hmm. Might have just made up a word. Uh, we decided to use it uh, as a part of the as a part of the arrangement for this tune. So so you hear it kind of in it. I wouldn't say it's original format because I sort of had to rework it key wise to fit with uh, with what's happening. But you hear that chorale, and then you hear the song that's based on the chorale, kind of with different uh, musical motivations, uh, and then you hear the chorale at the end again. So that's that's how we chose chose that new one. They also both of these tunes are beautiful songs again they they have so much stuff to work with as an as an arranger and as a performer my hope is that this concert will be something first and foremost that brings the audience joy uh i feel like all of the music we chose is music that is um, is heartfelt and honest as a uh, as a song and as a piece of work but also uh, something that as performers we can all sort of get behind and uh, and and play with our hearts uh, that in fact was one of the big things that I took from doing this project at this time it was so so good to play music with humans in a room uh, it's been a long time, and it's so reaffirming to know that that's why I do this. That's why so many musicians do this, is the connection we have with other people. Uh, at this time, we couldn't connect in person with an audience. So the hope for me is that uh, at least the connection that we feel in the room, at least some of that comes across to an audience, and I hope that the audience feels connected to us as we're as we're playing this music. And I, hope, I do hope it brings a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of hope and a little bit of uh, just joy. And still somehow it's life's illusions I recall. I really 